Hello, sir. Hi, hi. Nice to see you guys. Wow. So many guys. Hi, sir. Hi, hi. Uh, so we are going to wait for a couple of minutes, and we are going to uh, let the people, all the people who are waiting, come in, and then we are going to start. Okay, I can start start the intro once we were like. How are you guys? Fine, sir. Good, 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 good. Good. Good, good. Yes, sir. Good. But it's very boring. You're welcome to take some of my classes then. <laughs> Wherever you are better equipped than PSM faculty from home. <laughs> <laughs> that is that nine hundred p mic. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Let more people come through. So Shadab is saying uh, the live is taking a little uh, time to figure out. So we can start for now. Okay, hi guys. Uh, my name is Tapushi. I am the youth organizer for the Student Council of Virtual School of Mumbai. Student School of Mumbai, a virtual school of music in Mumbai. Uh, and I'm also a sound student here. Uh, so this uh, master class is the second in series. Um, time expansion happened with your voice. Can you hear me? Zoom did some time compression expansion <laughs> with your voice, so just go again. Okay, okay, again. My name is Tapushi. I am a part of the Student Council. I'm the events organizer of the Student Council for True School of Music Mumbai. I'm also a sound student here, and this is the second masterclass in the series of masterclasses that we are having this term. 
so for this master class we have the hod of our sound department kishore banan uh, kishore banan has been an educator for 15 years uh, he started off at sa in chennai then he was teaching at sa mumbai and then finally at dsm he also runs uh, an acoustic consultancy company called white stereo and he works as an acoustician as well uh, he has a wealth of knowledge so please make sure you make the best use of it in this master class and before we start i would just like to give you a few guidelines keep yourself muted uh, if you have any questions pertaining to something that he is talking about uh, leave that on the chat if there's any questions that you have that doesn't pertain to what he is talking about currently please hold on about those questions for later we will open session up for q and a after the session is done if everyone's good with that give me a thumbs up cool okay kishor sir over to you uh thanks tapushi so welcome guys and thank you for taking the time out to attend this session i see a lot of uh, sound students so this uh, everything that i'll explain might not be new to you but yes uh, there are many people i don't know so hopefully you take out something uh, valuable from this from this uh, master class okay and uh, i'm going to keep showing with, like presentation and in between i some video as well okay so yeah let's continue so today's master class is about uh room acoustics okay uh and uh, the whole point is to basically uh, understand how to improve the sound performance of your room and uh, improve the sound proofing position your equipment in a better way right so that's the plan for today's master class uh the very first question that i would ask is why does a home studio make sense Okay, why does the home studio make sense? Can you guys hear me? My mic is open, so yes, you should sir. be able to hear me. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, why does the home studio make sense? You can see this clearly, right? The presentation. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, I'll explain in very simple presentation why it makes sense. Okay. So, this is you at home. Okay. Relaxing. No stress. and then even at work you are having a great time no problems but the problem is in between you were like this okay so you don't want to be in between like this in today's times especially so staying at home having the home so that's something that you can seriously consider there are other advantages as well for example you really save on your expenses when you are able to do a lot of work from home since you own the equipment and you are not paying studio rent so this is you from home studio and working from a commercial commercial studio might be expensive so you don't want to end up uh, you know losing money that you could have made by going to a commercial studio again and again i'm not saying commercial studio is out of the picture but home studio relieves requirement for commercial studio yeah and only for some large scale project you may need it or for the final part of the project i'm going to talk about optimizing your home studio or studio and there are three parts to it the angle things like that cool let me explain some important points about acoustics before we start okay there's a chat hang on um uh, reading in i'm not sure okay anyway so um some important points about acoustics before i start okay one second oh, what is this oh, sorry some uh, other slide has come in between Uh, some other research i was doing uh anyways in a way you can say it's connected with acoustics because this also affects acoustics of human beings yeah 
so this is uh, announced today on the latest news so uh, anyway ignore that mistake okay so what uh, what is uh, uh, what is important about acoustics some important points acoustics is the oldest science in the field of audio everything that we do in terms of equipment process all that came later acoustics is actually the oldest everyone's mics because uh, there's some sound coming okay and so Uh, one second. So, uh, Taposhi, just mute the mics. Um, it's not happening here. Anyway, continuing. So, it is the oldest uh, field in the field of uh, uh, audio, and uh, that is shown by things like this, right? This is a. a amphitheater the epidorus amphitheater uh, ancient greek understood acoustics this is from the 4th century bc and people have basically uh, uh, learned how to radiate sound correctly so that even though there is no microphone everyone can hear the sound clearly right so it's not a new science it's a very ancient science uh, that's like the diagram of it so the sort of the dish kind of shape right that make sure that sound spreads evenly and covers evenly the audience so acoustics is has been there for a while what else another example this is one of the oldest books written on acoustics okay it's called magia universalis by gasper short and it was published in 1657 so this is one of the first books to uh, explain acoustic theory and about sound radiation and all that. so you can see it's so much older than modern science especially anything to do with electronics okay what else this concept of acoustics has also existed in india so this is the gold gol gumbas okay which is uh, one of the biggest domes uh, ever made and uh, the dome structure is responsible for creating a long reverb time and uh, you hear a long reverb tail which probably suits or suited whatever activities they conducted here right it's like acoustic reinforcement you didn't have speakers at that time so let me show you this video and uh, i hope you'll be able to hear the audio so i'm playing it give me a thumbs Go up Kumbas. if you can hear the audio It took two years of negotiation with Indian authorities before we could get into the largest dome of Asia and an acoustic marvel that has no equal. A place with a world-famous 25-second reverb tail, where reflections of even whispers can be counted ten times. <laughs> Twenty five second long reverb, super long. Okay, so the huge structure supported that. Uh, are you able to hear the audio clearly when I play the videos? Okay. What are the other important points? Some important points that maybe non sound guys should know is that first of all, human uh, perception of frequency balance is not flat. If we play a completely flat sound, uh, that's not how you pick it up. or uh, your ears are designed in such a way that you pick up mid frequencies much more louder than uh, any of the other frequencies right so uh, uh, when you are doing any kind of acoustic treatment or when you are doing sound system design uh, definitely you should pay the maximum attention to the mid range no point having very good low frequency control when the mid range has problems so because your uh, efficiency of your hearing is really good in the mids we give priority to that range i would say any good acoustic space will do that okay another important point is the way in which we perceive sound from different directions so our the acuity with which humans perceive audio is best uh, on the lateral plane or on the horizontal plane that means sound that comes from the sides or the front 
we can uh, hear it with much greater acuity, greater accuracy than sounds that come from bottom or top, right? So if the sound comes from top or bottom, we don't have the same degree of uh, resolution with which we can analyze it as compared to sounds that come from the lateral plane, from the sides. So again, what you would do is if you have limited resources, you would want to treat surfaces which are to the sides more than the surfaces that are above you. Okay, it is uh, not really possible to treat surfaces below you because you will have you will have your furniture and equipment. But definitely the sides matter much more than the top. Got it? Okay. And this picture shows that our perception of sound changes based on the angle at which the sound comes to us from. Okay. So definitely uh, lateral plane is more important. Horizontal plane is more important. Okay. Let's talk about soundproofing. What is soundproofing? So soundproofing require, it means that you're trying to stop the sound from entering your space. Or if you're worried about disturbing your neighbors, then you also don't want sound to go to them. And sound can penetrate a structure in different ways, right? Uh, the two main ways in which sound can go into your room is one is airborne and one is structure borne. Sound is nothing but vibration. Uh, of uh, air, right? So, uh, if there is a path for air to go through, like a small crack or a small hole, then sound will leak through that. So, we want to make sure we solve those problems. A more serious problem is, you know, if the floor vibrates of your in your hall, then it will also vibrate in your bedroom. So, then you have to do structural uh, design correctly. That means you want to break the structural path, which means you have to use some kind of suspension system. So, that's more serious and Commercial studios do that more than home studios. Okay, so one of the main thing that you can do is work on your door and window systems. So if you are looking at a door, the problem is my maybe it's very light, and also that the edges are not sealed. The small crack through uh, the edges, the sound can leak. Okay, so there are cracks here. So you can see here how uh, you can see the light. Yeah? So if you can see light leaking through, then sound is also going to leak through. So you have got sound leaking through the edges. You want to solve it. So in a ready-made door, a basic way to do it is just to add like a soundproofing, uh, you know, attachment. So this is like a threshold system, door bottom threshold. And you fit it onto the door and onto the floor. So when you shut the door, the door becomes airtight. Okay, so you'll do that for the side also, you'll do that for the top also. So by adding these kind of attachments, the space can become more airtight. Even better than that would be to go for a ready-made UPVC kind of door system. So UPVC is this material with which the door is made. And generally it will feature some kind of glass in between. Got it? So UPVC door can make your life easier in terms of blocking sound. Window has the same problem. The window glass could be quite thin and the edges might not stop the sound from penetrating because the air is passing through it. So you want to seal that as well. Okay. So if you want to completely close the window, let's say, then you can use a sealant. You can use like a silicone sealant and seal the cracks. So by sealing the cracks, air won't penetrate and come through that. Now, uh, that's not enough though. Because the uh, normal windows are made of float glass and float glass is very light and it is not, uh, uh, it's a solid, one single solid piece. When you have a single solid piece, sound can flow through it more easily. So if you want to improve the soundproofing of your window, you can uh, use something called laminated glass. What is laminated glass? It's nothing but two sheets of float glass, but there is a soft pliable layer in between. There is a, in, like a film in between, which is called PVB. PVB stands for polyvinyl butyl. So what you have is hard glass followed by something pliable and soft followed by again hard glass. So this change of hard, soft, hard, soft, that kind of change really helps in stopping sound energy. So a solid piece of glass will not block as much sound as the same thickness of uh, laminated glass. Just because of this pliable layer, you are improving the sound. Okay. Now, that's how it will look. So if you see some kind of crack in the middle with some other material, that's a laminated glass. Okay. Uh, yeah. So just like the door, you can go for a UPVC system again for the window. 
and you can either go for a sliding one or better is to use a swing door where, where you can shut it properly okay so upvc door window if you can upgrade that will improve your uh, sound proofing okay because your door window is the major source through which sound will leak what else that's the side profile of a upvc uh, window so this is a dual pane glass system with the air gap in between air gap also helps in stopping sound and that's the upvc profile like the plastic kind of material with which it's made yeah, yeah. let's continue so this table sort of shows you what different kinds of glass actually do so as you can see when you go towards laminated glass and you increase the gap you increase the thickness then the sound proofing improves a bigger number generally means better sound proofing a uh, single piece of glass will not do as well as a uh, laminated glass getting it so laminated glass is a better option that's the right way okay if you want to do even more serious kind of soundproofing then it requires that you make a, a proper uh, soundproof structure inside this approach is called room in a room approach we are basically taking the space here and building two independent rooms inside the rooms are floating on rubber kind of isolation and they are separate walls so what you are doing is you are making another room inside this big room it's called room in a room and what happens is you are able to stop sound even better but this is a more elaborate approach it will cost more it will take more time to do it okay but if you are very serious about making a professional really professional home studio then you can go for this and a lot of people actually do it they actually want to uh, do it in a uh, apartment or a house that they own and they find it uh, easier to actually invest there rather than go and take a new place okay so um, i was telling you about uh, stc and things like that so the, the, these tables sort of explain what what is the relation between sound level and what you experience so here they are showing you the ambient sound level um, in a uh, in different places so if you are in a uh, you know commercial office sound level is 40 db 50 db and uh, when you are in a cinema theater the sound level when nothing is playing should be about 25 db so you can see 25 db of sound 20 db of sound is good uh, so if there is more sound outside and you do sound proofing and it drops it to something like this then you have reached a pretty decent uh, level okay um, higher than that will be disturbing because you won't be able to judge what you are listening to from the speakers so higher uh, lower ambient sound because of the sound leaking from outside is desirable okay there's one more thing called stc stc is like a technical way of understanding how much sound can be blocked so higher the number better the sound proofing so commercial studios and all will have like stc of 60 and all. and in um, uh, 40 and above starts to give you privacy that means you won't be able to hear what other people are saying or others cannot hear what you are saying so you get some more privacy you can't understand human speech because of the sound being stopped okay so i hope you are understanding these two things uh, how much should be the ambient sound level and how much stc you would try to achieve the higher the stc you try to go for the more you have to spend because the materials increase the weight increases things like that happen okay for a home studio you might not need to go for a very high stc system uh, stc 45 and all is not bad okay um let's continue so this is a which explains about how to me this is music to you it's probably noise reducing noise or soundproofing is a big deal these days so what is soundproofing there are three categories increasing airborne sound isolation increasing structural sound isolation and increasing structural mass let's say that water represents airborne noise most rooms have lots of places where noise will leak in the door windows electrical outlets air vents and even ceiling light fixtures sound will leak in and out any openings in the walls ceiling or floor 
Fortunately, there are products that are great at sealing those sound leaks, including door seal kits, acoustic window inserts, and acoustical sealants. Along with airborne noise, there's another soundproofing problem, structure-borne noise, which is sound moving through walls, ceilings, and floors. But these structures are solid, right? How can sound move through a building? We'll use a Newton's cradle to illustrate how sound energy can move through a seemingly solid wall. The first ball represents sound in a room. The next three represent a wall made up of sheeting, then sheetrock, and the last air in the next room. Watch what happens when I drop the first ball. It hits the next ball and sends energy through each ball in line. The middle three don't move much, then the energy reaches the last ball, and it moves almost as high as the first one. That represents sound energy transferring through solid structures. To reduce that energy transfer, we can place damping materials, represented by this piece of rubber, between some parts of a building. For example, between the sheetrock and the framing. With the damping material in place, the last ball doesn't move nearly as far as it did without it. This is like soundproofing between two rooms by damping parts of the structure in between. There are products that dampen structural vibrations, like RSIC clips, rubber stud isolators, floor underlayment, and elastomeric sheetrock glue. Soundproofing also means increasing structural mass. Creating a denser structure makes it more difficult for sound vibrations to move through it. This Newton's cradle is the same except we've changed the middle ball to a larger, heavier one. We're also using the same rubber damper. One ball has more mass, so this time the last ball hardly moves. There's less energy transfer through a structure with more mass. To increase the mass of your walls, ceilings, and floors, use double-layered sheetrock, build thicker framing, and use heavier, denser building materials. Soundproofing means increasing isolation and increasing mass. If you seal air leaks, dampen vibrations between structural parts, and increase the mass of building components, you'll hear a lot less noise. Thanks for watching. So, uh, uh, I hope that video was a good illustration. In simple words, if you increase the mass of the structure in between the wall, door, window, better soundproofing. And if you have layering system where there is soft material in between, then again you get better soundproofing. Okay. Uh, Taposhi. Yes, sir. In the chat, I was reading there, uh, Harsh is recommending that everyone put the video off because there was some lag. Yes, so we did that. We, did and that right? we have one question regarding yeah. when you were talking about windows. Tejas Modi asked if uh, putting curtains on the windows help in sound system. Yeah, so it will only help with high frequency. It will not help with low mid and low frequency because curtain, uh, after all, cannot be too heavy, right? So light materials, porous materials like curtains, that will not really... Uh, Eliminate the low frequency and low mid frequency leakage. Uh, sealing the window and um, maybe putting a specialist window will be better. But if let's say you are getting very irritated because there's a lot of higher mid sound, like traffic sound or car honking sound, all that is disturbing you. So yes, uh, you can uh, hang like really thick curtain and get an improvement. But it's not the perfect solution. Is there any okay. recommendation uh, towards what kind of material the curtain should be made of? Uh, the thicker the material, the better it is. The uh, fluffier it is, the better it is in, in a way. So thin fabric uh, won't work. Um, this curtain which I am using in my house, I don't know if you can see. But this won't work. This is too thin. You need something thick. I'll show you later anyways. But yeah. And then uh, I've seen people, you know what they do? They go and buy that Gadda wala ka material, like you get the local bed, no, which is stitched right. by people. So you get like really thick, this thick one also. Like you can roll it. Right. So people right. actually, I've seen hanging it from in front of the windows. That might also work, but base doesn't stop. That you can say. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah, welcome. Okay, so next slide is talking about best soundproofing ever. 
you know we are talking about how to stop sound so who did it the best which is the best soundproofing so you should know microsoft holds the world record for it there is a guinness book of world record for this world's quietest building okay and what have they done they have basically made a room for their uh, testing work okay you should know uh, you have to make a anechoic chamber which is like a testing laboratory for sound and they test all their equipment inside it to see how much noise the machine makes and all that and uh, they wanted to achieve the maximum soundproofing possible so they made a, a massive structure it is basically a building which has got six layers of concrete walls each concrete wall is 1 ft thick and then every concrete room is like on springs okay so it's like a uh, the word they used to describe it is that it's like a concrete onion so they made a concrete onion and they've achieved soundproofing of minus 26.20.6 dba which is incredible because it is 26.6 db below human hearing so you will hear nothing inside this room okay so i have a video here where they uh, where they uh, like get the guinness book of world record guy and try to see if they can break the world record so take a look at it This is the anechoic chamber. One thing to notice are these wedges. These are sound absorbing material. They are anechoic. That means no echoes. All the sounds are absorbed. To give you a rough idea, the Brownian motion, that is the random air particle in space, is around minus 23 dB. You can't get any quieter because that's just the air particles moving. we are the edge of what is the limits of physics in that sense we have exercised attention to every detail as much as we can for any measurement we do in engineering and science our criteria is to say is it a meaningful measurement and that just means is it valid what you're doing it has to be repeatable to do that we need highly controlled environment so these labs are about creating rock solid acoustically controlled environment When you plug in your power supply into your device, for example, it makes noise. When you adjust the brightness of the display on the screen, it makes noise. This chamber gives us the opportunity to look for those really small signals that can have a big impact to the end user. One of the big things right now is a personal assistant, right? Like Cortana, for example. I think you will see more and more that Cortana is becoming a bigger part of your life in general. For that to work well, audio is very, very important. Audio on the microphone side and audio on the speaker side. I'm sure there are a lot of people trying to do that right now. Yes. Yes. So we want to put yes. the bar. Yeah. We always want to have the best tools available for the job. This is what it is. It's the best tool available. I think within Microsoft, it's is a tool that we can use across the company for scenarios we probably haven't even thought about yet. It'll take a huge effort. If it could have been done, everybody else would have been doing it. Guinness tells us we need to reach minus 13. I think we're going to get to a minus 16. I think we're going to beat it by 3 dB. Let's record it and okay. uh, let's pause process the data for three minutes. Yeah, approximately. Go for it. Let's analyze that. Okay. okay, we're going to push that to the to the templates. Okay, twenty point six dBA. That beats the world record. I think we did it. You sure? I'm sure. Baby, this is fantastic. Yeah. This is great. This is It's a great accomplishment. We have best-in-class labs and best-in-class products. Microsoft has the world's quietest place now, officially. It'll be no doubt, game, right? No doubt. Excellent.
so i was telling you how much uh, is the new record right so it is minus 20 db you can see over here human hearing stops at 0 db so if you create any sound energy below 0 db we cannot hear it for us it's silence and uh, air molecules just hitting each other uh, which is called brownian motion that creates minus 23 db of noise you can't get much softer than that right because you have to remove the air there. so these guys have gone so close to it minus 20 db right so uh, it's an amazing achievement uh, one second. So he paid. Okay. <laughs> he made Mr. Gopal. Mr. Gopal, he is local. He is Atma Nirbhar. Be like Mr. Gopal. Okay. Okay. Let's Sir, continue to the second a... part. Question. Yeah, now we can take some questions. Yeah, so the, the last question was about, uh, again, Tejas Modi has asked, how does it help Microsoft to spend so much to create such a quiet place? Uh, as they, as uh, they explained in the video, uh, they are not really measuring speakers and all that. They are measuring the noise created by like electronic chips and all. You should know like when you design a CPU for a motherboard, right? When the CPU is functioning uh, at a microscopic level, there are a lot of gates and all which are working inside. So they also create noise. So this is to measure that really tiny amount of noise made by electronic circuits and all. So they are using it for that research. And yeah, they they are a, like a, a, one of the biggest companies in the world. So they must have also taken it up as a project, you know, where they set a benchmark. So you know, they have done something like that. Right. Uh, Hirsch has a question. Is transfer sure. function used here? Uh, no, transfer function is, I don't think is used because you're not measuring, uh, what is transfer function? It is the performance of a particular circuit or a system. So you're putting a reference signal into it and measuring the changes. That's not what we are doing here. We are measuring ambient noise, how much noise from outside the building is coming inside. So that you don't need a, you don't need transfer function for that. Okay. Havel has a question. How exactly are they measuring the levels in the chamber and what's the procedure involved? Yeah, so you know the thing is you cannot measure this with like a normal sound card or something because the uh, noise floor of the sound card itself is going to be much higher than whatever they are, whatever level they are going. So you need special laboratory equipment and most of the equipment they are using is from Bruel and Care. BNK, Bruel and Care. So that is uh, a company from uh, Denmark and they are one of the industry leaders in all this measurement technology, right? So the analyzer, the interface, all of that is from them. And uh, you can Google the about that. So you'll get the exact equipment also. Yeah. Right. Someone else also had a question. They raised their hand, but I don't see it on the participant list. Uh, was it Abhi uh, Any other questions? You can, you, you guys, you can tap, type it in the chat. It'll be easier. You can ask about soundproofing for now. And if there are no, if, if no one is typing, then let's proceed. Okay. Cool. Should I continue? Uh, Ro uh, yeah, Rohit has a question. Ha have they also made the floor absorptive as well? Because we noticed that under the floor, they, uh, it, I didn't, I didn't, didn't quite understand if they, that was reflections from the ceiling. But we also saw absorptive material under the floor. Yeah, so uh, an anechoic chamber can be either a full anechoic chamber, like a whole space anechoic chamber, which means that even the floor has to be absorptive. The problem is that if you put those huge wedges on the floor, you won't be able to walk on it, right? So right. if you want to make an anechoic chamber completely absorptive, you have to then make a grill on top of it. So they had made that grill and they were walking on it. It was not a reflection. It's actually the wedges under, under, under them. It's on the floor. And when you have to make a little budget kind of system, then what they do is they go for a hemi uh, sphere, hemi anechoic. So the floor is normal concrete and the walls and the ceiling are absorbed. So in like, you know, uh, you won't be able to take a, a bus or a car inside or a plane inside. That won't be able to take the weight. But you have to do anechoic testing of these uh, 
products also like how much noise is created by mercedes ka, one car so that they do in a hemi and a good chamber which has a flat floor on concrete floor. okay uh yeah. we have one more question uh what levels of stc would you rec recommend for a home studio uh 40 45 more than enough. more than that is expensive okay uh also is there a big role of soundproofing sponges that we usually get you know uh commercially and if it makes sense to be using this yeah so you can't use sponge for soundproofing because sponge is porous and it's a very light material so people get confused when they look at sponge they think it is for soundproofing but it's not for that it's for acoustic treatment so we'll come to that okay. any other questions yeah uh, rohit has one more question can you tell us what the grill in the video is made of so you have to make it out of steel there's no other material right you have to make it out of something strong the problem is what should be the size of the perforation and all because that will have a acoustic effect so you try to make it as uh, unobtrusive to the audio as possible without compromising on the strength because you don't want it to break and people falling underneath because you will bring like big speakers also sometimes. So yeah, so there is no specific like size. It's made of steel. It's a steel framing. And uh, sometimes what they do is they take uh, that whatever error is happening because of that, that also is accounted for in the calculations. Uh, I think we don't have any more questions, so I think we can move on to the next one. Cool. Thank you. Okay, next uh, part is noise reduction, which is basically trying to reduce the noise inside the room, right? So, uh, you will need, you can't work with a fan, right? So, you need air conditioning. Definitely, you don't want uh, window AC because the problem with the window AC is that the compressor unit is a part of that system, so it has more noise. Plus, you're making a proper hole in your wall, so sound is going to leak through all that. So you have to go for at least a split air conditioner. In the split air conditioner, the, you know, the compressor unit, which is more noisy, is outside. And then uh, you're not making any hole because just a pipe is connected between them. Right? So split AC is recommended. Now what you do is you want to make sure that your AC doesn't create so much noise. So you go and find out the noise level of the AC. right? So the indoor noise level you find out. And uh, go and look for the model which has the lowest noise and does all the cooling that you need. So you go and do that research. Uh, the lower the dB value, better for you. Uh, might be more expensive because one way they reduce the dB is by damping the body and by using better machine parts which has less friction, all of that. Yeah. So um, you can go and do your research about how quiet a unit gets and get the appropriate one. I've used Daikin a lot and they to get very quiet. So yeah, I would recommend Daikin. Okay. What else? If you want even quieter sound, because you have to understand in a split AC, there is motor inside this and the air is flowing from a small opening, right? So there will be some machine noise and some turbulence also. So to eliminate that, you should go for a ductable system. In a ductable system, there is no machine inside your soundproofing room. Uh, the con compressor unit is outside and the air is uh, circulated through ducts and the main uh, air handler which is passing the air that is also outside. Uh, only ducts enter your room, right? So it will look like this. Let's say this is your room or this is your room. So only the duct comes to you. The machine which is passing the air, the air handler system, AHU, that is out, uh, outside your main room. So ductable is recommended but you have to spend more and there will be ducting work involved in all that. Okay. So yeah, that kind of thing. So then you do a fall ceiling kind of design and the AC, AC venting is like this. So it's the quietest way you can uh, put an AC in your room. Okay, but it will cost more and take more time, more construction. Cool. Okay, let's continue. Next part I'm going to talk about is acoustic treatment, right? So what is acoustic treatment? We want to improve the sound inside. A lot of people have this misconception. They think that if I do soundproofing, my studio is ready. But soundproofing only stops the sound of outside from coming inside. Uh, the room by itself might not sound correct. You might have different kinds of acoustic problems. What are these acoustic problems? Standing wave is one acoustic problem. What is standing wave? Certain frequencies start to resonate. Or they link in the room in a perfect way. If you look at this red one, right? It is like perfectly the size of the room. So what happens is... 
any sound wave which is exactly the size of the room exactly half the size of the room exactly quarter the size of the room those uh, sound waves will actually start multiplying or building up in the room and um, those frequencies will be much louder than other frequencies you can understand it by looking at a waterfall graph so you can see over here some parts are coming in front right so what is a waterfall graph you have got frequency from left to right you have got level on the vertical axis and you have got time on this axis okay front to back so anything which is jutting out like that is the resonance which is remaining for a long time so that could be a standing wave and you have to solve it okay so how can i solve it so a common uh, treatment uh, recommendation that you'll see is that uh, you put treatment in the corners now by the color only you can see that it is like glass wool compressed glass wool also known as mineral fiber and you're putting it in the corner why in the corner because uh, maximum amount of uh, resonant energy goes in the corners actually okay so your different standing waves all terminates in the corner so if you treat the corner definitely you'll reduce the energy of uh, the standing wave but it's not a perfect solution because the problem is that the treatment corner treatment is generally just a foam wedge like this and foam is not specifically tuned for any one frequency right so it might help reduce the effect a little bit but there might still be quite audible standing waves you might put it in a corner like this which might help improve the sound a little bit but you might not be addressing one particular way which is the problem right so what companies do is that they make this specialist uh treatment products this is like a base trap and what is it it's a specially designed material and it is designed so that it works uh, across a particular low frequency range so this works like from let's say 75 to uh, you know 130 140 so uh, that much range if your room has got some strong resonance or standing wave in that range that will be targeted by putting this product there right so you could do a little research and find out what standing wave you have and see if any product is available which will address it do keep in mind that just adding one won't do anything you might have to buy quite a lot and put it across the walls right so that's a specialist low frequency treatment product which is also called base trap and it is uh, if you ask what is special about it how is it different so it is not foam inside it is uh, it is using different methods for example one method is use, using a resonant panel so this is like a diy base trap design right so you have got um, a box made where you are stretching a plastic kind of sheet and that will resonate and it will vibrate if you take sound from the room and make some mechanical motion happen inside a box basically you have taken sound energy at that frequency and put it inside the box and by choosing the material and the size and the you know uh, tension and all you will be able to tune it so if you find that your room has got 80 or 90 hertz problem you can actually build a base trap which is targeting that okay so a base trap is different it's not just foam if somebody gives you a foam ka box and says it is base trap it's not correct it's not actually a base trap so people will make it like this these are the ways they design it and the deeper it is the lower the frequency will catch so if you have a lot of really low base problems don't expect to solve it with something which is very thin that won't happen okay second problem that you are going to experience is uh, comb filtering what is that so this guy is sitting here sound comes to him directly from the speaker but the same sound is bouncing from so many different places and coming back to him sound bounces from the side wall and comes to him ball behind the uh, monitor ball behind the engineer so he is getting direct sound plus many time delayed copies of the same sound and when you do that right when you take a sound wave and you mix it with lot of time delayed copies of it then you get lot of cancellation you get cancellation of frequencies so uh, this happens even on the vertical axis so from the ceiling and the floor also you have problem right so this uh, is called combing or comb filtering normally everything should be in flat but because this is happening because there is a direct sound and there is a indirect sound mixing some frequencies cancel out and some frequencies add up it's called combing because it looks like a comb okay 
and uh, the blue part is the original sound it should have been like that but because uh, the reflection of the same sound mixed with the original sound what you get is this brown one which has got a lot of frequencies missing so let me tell you comb filtering is definitely a bad thing it is going to really affect room acoustics and your perception of sound your judgment of mix right you start eqing this and pulling this up when it is not in the mix it's in the room so you have to address it how do you do that put absorptive foam absorptive material on the walls so uh, put it on the walls wherever reflection is coming from okay and by taking panels like this absorptive panels and putting it on the reflection points you can uh, eliminate it you can reduce the comb filter watch this video where this guy explains about the same concept Hi, I'm John Calder of Acoustic Geometry. Let's talk about acoustics, which is basically how sound works in rooms. It may seem complicated, so let's make it simpler. Most rooms have flat walls and flat ceilings, and sound bounces off of these. So how does that affect the sound? I'll use these two Nerf guns to demonstrate. I've got this one aimed, so this disc goes directly to the ear. That represents direct sound. I've got this one aimed, so that disc bounces off the wall and it represents reflected sound. I'll shoot them both at the same time. Reflected sound arrives at our ears later than direct sound, even though it started out at the same time, because it's traveling farther. And this wall is only one flat surface. There are at least six in the average room, and that's a lot of reflected sound. But why is reflected sound bad? I'll demonstrate using these two identical patterns. The blue pattern represents direct sound waves, and the red pattern represents reflected sound waves. They start out together, but when I move the red one backwards, like a delayed sound reflection, it creates destructive interference patterns which changes the original sound wave. Here's the problem. Original sound waves are distorted by strong later arriving reflections. Also, sound travels really fast, about 1130 feet per second. A sound wave will bounce back and forth between these two walls about 60 times in one second. Sound travels so fast, it fills a room almost instantly. And this is only one bounce angle. Every room has thousands. How can we make our rooms sound better? Remember our Nerf guns? I'll shoot these at the same time, again representing a sound wave bouncing off a wall. Both discs bounce together in the same direction, which means the reflected sound is at full strength. Now let's use the first of our two acoustical tools, an absorber, to reduce the strength of sound bounces. To a sound wave, an absorber looks a little like a hole in the wall, so some of the energy doesn't come back. An absorber works by reducing the strength of reflected sound that would otherwise cause more destructive interference. But if we use only absorbers in a room, it makes it sound dull and unnatural. Historically, humans don't like overly absorbent rooms. So, let's use the second of our two acoustical tools, the curved surface diffuser. It also reduces the strength of sound bounces. A diffuser works by scattering the sound reflections in different directions, smoothing out destructive interferences throughout the room. Room acoustics are greatly improved using a combination of absorption and diffusion. It's all about reducing those flat surface reflections. Use a combination of absorbers and diffusers, and your room will sound a lot more natural. Thanks for watching. So he mentioned this concept of diffusion in the room. What is that? So it's a different approach to treatment of sound compared to absorption. Okay, as you can see in the picture, uh, sound is hitting a uneven object and when sound hits it it scatters and goes in different directions this is called diffusion okay now diffusion uh, is used a lot in studios so that you get the correct kind of ambient sound or re reverb is of the correct quality right um, 
let's compare what's going on if you don't do anything about your wall you're going to get a strong repeat of the same direct sound and also what will happen is uh, the because the reflection is in in a specific angle when you stand here you won't hear that sound when you stand here you will hear that sound when you stand here you won't hear that sound so basically the acoustic behavior of the room changes based on where you're going right so we call it a acoustic hotspot now let's absorb that uh, reflection by putting absorber on the wall so what absorber does is it just eats up the energy right it converts sound into heat in a way and the reflection becomes weaker so while you have solved the problem of uh, comb filtering the new problem you have created is that you are taking away acoustic energy now if you want a decently loud sound you'll have to play everything louder which every time might not work okay so the one option which will give you both which is basically better sound quality and louder level also is to use diffusion in diffusion because of this irregular pattern when the sound hits the surface it scatters in all directions not only that the sound also gets spread over time the different reflections arrive at different times so that sounds much better to us and you solve the problem of acoustic hotspot wherever you walk in the room the sound seems to be very consistent okay so diffusion is a very good uh, solution for improving sound in your room the only problem is that it's generally more expensive than just putting foam absorbers because you have to use board or some other material which costs a little more right so this video is explaining how to <laughs> Okay, sorry. This is not that video. This in this video, uh, this uh, saxophonist is playing uh, saxophone in two extreme rooms. One is a reverb chamber, and one is an anechoic chamber. Anechoic chamber we already uh, talked about. A reverb chamber is a room which has a lot of reverb, okay? which can also be used for acoustic testing. So listen to the difference. This is the reverb chamber. <laughs> So what's happening is that um, the reverberant room sounds too washed out, too much reverb. There is no clarity and presence, and the anechoic chamber sounds dead. The instrument doesn't have any life; it is not interacting with the room. So you don't want that. Most musical instruments uh, sound good when they have some room reverb or some room reflections to play with. So what are good re reflections? Generally, diffused reflections are good. So. Take a look at this video where they explain how it works. Using an array of ping pong balls to represent sound visually, we will demonstrate what sound does when hitting different surfaces. we will show what happens when sound hits a flat reflective surface. Notice the balls all bounce off at the same time and in the same direction. Now we will show what happens when sound hits a diffuser. You will immediately notice that the energy of the wave of balls was scattered in all different directions. However, if you look closely, you will also notice that the balls hit the surfaces at different times. For more information on diffusion for your application, please contact Acoustics first. Diffusion gives you the right balance of uh, clarity as well as ambience, and uh, you should know you should use whatever you can afford in your studio. Um, some people think that you need that shape, right? So a lot of people have this uh, misunderstanding that we put egg crates. And the egg crates up and down shape will give diffusion. It won't work like that because the problem with the egg crate is that it's moving. It's very soft, and it is too too uh, light a material to actually shape the sound in that way. 
uh, what you need is a professionally designed diffuser, which is not going to bend too much when sound hits it. Sound has to bounce back from it. Okay. Okay. Um, what are the budget ways? Now, all of you might not have the uh, financial resources to do all this technically correct solutions. So, I'll show you some budget approaches. You know, if you have a large uh, fabric kind of couch, that also works like a base trap because uh, all these deeper parts of the couch start to absorb base. You can put it on the back wall of your room and automatically the base should reduce. Don't put some leather one. You need something which is porous so it will absorb more base. Then uh, curtains, as we discussed earlier, uh, they will also help. Uh, sometimes what you can do is just put this curtain rod on a flat wall. Okay, you don't have to put it in, on, on, in front of a window. You, you can run it on a wall itself. And then put more curtain than normally that people will put because you're not just covering the area, you're folding it. If you have more folds, then you absorb better. And thin curtain won't work. You will have to get this kind of fat, well, uh, duvet type of material. Okay? So the fatter it is, the better it will absorb. What else? You can't afford diffuser. Put a bookshelf on the back wall and uh, the book sheet, book size and all will do diffusion. Obviously, you should try to make it more random. So, if you try to keep books in the same, like a very nice order, then the diffusion is less. If you mix it up, big, small book all mixed up, then you'll get more diffusion. So, bookshelf is a good way. Okay. Till now, you have not spent any money on any uh, special acoustic product, but the sound will improve a lot. One thing that might not happen is that this small room sound might not go even after doing all this. So one tip which really works is you record uh, in your inside your cupboard. Okay. So you can put your uh, podcast mic or your phone. A lot of people record uh, directly on phone for uh, uh, social media content. You can put the phone inside the cupboard. Uh, my wife does it at, at, at our house and it works very well. And because of the absorptive you know, uh, clothes and all, you sort of get a very good clean, dry sound. So you can try that. Okay. Uh, yeah. So any questions, uh, Tapushi, we can go ahead with questions yes. for this section. Yes. So we have two questions uh, regarding ducting uh, yeah. for HVAC. Uh, so one question is, uh, are, it won't sound leak uh, through the ducts from one room to the other? And said the second question relating to HVAC again is how do you tackle the resonances that would occur in the AC vents, especially the low ends? Yeah, so the answer to the first question is that you're not running uh, AC duct from one room to another. Each room should have its own uh, dedicated air conditioning system. So the duct comes from outside, not from recording room to control. Right. And uh, the second part of the question is that uh, First of all, for sound to resonate inside the duct, you should have a loud enough sound inside the duct. And that won't happen if you use the right AC material, um, AC machine, because the AC itself will create less uh, noise inside. And then if you're still worried, then you should know that uh, you'll have to line the duct with absorptive material on all, all sides. So in very specialist uh, studio designs, they do it. I don't think in a home studio, you really need to worry about all that. Uh, if you make the duct really small, that's not a good idea because then the flow rate increases and you get more uh, wind sound. So a bigger duct area and a slower flow rate is better. Right. Uh, we have one more question. How to judge as to where in the room to place the absorber and the diffuser? Yeah, so let me go back to this picture where I showed you about comb filtering, right? One second. So uh, you can see here uh, that the problem is being created by the side walls. So the point this is called the point of first reflection, right? So you have to treat that. So you'll have to treat wherever the balls come. Now, uh, if you cannot put the full room with diffuser, it will be too expensive. So what you do is you try to put absorbers on the areas which are closer to you. So the side walls and the back wall, you can put absorber. This back wall, I mean behind the speaker. 
and your rear wall you can put diffuser because what happens is majority of the sound energy from the speaker goes and hits the back wall and the diffused reflection from it will give you a nice envelopment and a nice you know reverb kind of feel so that's what i would recommend uh, we have one more question uh, yeah. the diffuser can be of any odd pattern is there a specific pattern that needs to be followed so as to get proper sound yeah so for a, a beginner i would say uh, buy a ready made diffuser rather than uh, trying to make your own uh, and technically correct diffusers are uh, a kind of diffuser called rpg reflection phase greeting or phase greeting diffuser so you'll have to look for that there is a company called rpg diffusers you can google that and you'll understand what is the correct price. there's mathematics behind it so you can't put a random shape there's a reason why all the wells are of a certain depth uh, we have one more question. How much distance must be maintained between the speakers and the back wall? We are doing that in the next section. Okay. Uh, and sir, I had one more question. Uh, yeah. Okay. What about a good recording software? Does it help a lot to get more acoustic sound? No. no. Okay. Software cannot improve uh, sound in the room. Uh, I have one question. Uh, so yes. we know that uh, acoustics is a is a subject which is very mathematics heavy. So yeah. if anyone and I also know like there are a lot of home, home studio owners who want to uh, who instead of going for the commercially available you know panels, they want to make their own panels because there yeah. are uh, unique uh, low frequency issues in every room. Yeah. So is there any any way of uh, is there any calculators that are available uh, to people that might help them to calculate? Uh, what sort of panels should they make uh, depending on their room dimensions? Yeah, so um, you uh, you should study a little bit like basic acoustics you should study and um, uh, like for absor absorption uh, there is no special calculation actually there can be really complex calculation but you don't have to get into that. Uh, the depth matters so the lower the frequency you want to control the deeper the absorber panel should be. Uh, generally, whatever is the lowest frequency you want to absorb, the absorber panel has to be ideally quarter of that in size. So that is the normal logic you apply. Um, diffusion is a little more tricky. Uh, what you can do is instead of trying to figure out how to make your own diffuser, you can go on many forums on on the uh, on the internet like Gear Sluts, John Sayers Recording uh, for Studio Forum. And uh, you'll get ready-made Excel sheets and all, where all these uh, calculators are already designed by somebody. Okay. And you can see what size uh, uh, of diffuser you want to make, how complex you want to make it, and um, what frequency range you want to diffuse. So based on your requirements, you can put all those numbers, and it'll give you the design. It'll give you all the numbers. And then you basically interpret it and tell your carpenter, cut so many pieces of this, cut so many pieces of this, you know, and then make it. That's how it works. Thank you, sir. We don't have any more questions from this section. Okay. So let's continue. The last part of the topic is uh, how to position your equipment, right? So let me show you. One second. Uh, monitor and listener placement. Okay, so this is critical because if you do right acoustics and soundproofing and all, but you sit in the wrong way, you have actually cancelled out a lot of the good work that you've done. So you have to position your monitors and listener correctly. Okay, so uh, this picture will give you a lot of information. I explained about standing waves. So the way standing wave works is that generally in the middle of the room, you generally don't get bass. You can do this experiment in a room if you have speakers, play music, walk from one end to the other end, walk, walk from one side to the other side. Very likely that in the middle you might lose uh, this. So this is known as a null point. Okay. So you don't want to sit in the null point. You don't want your head to be there because you won't hear bass and you'll keep increasing the bass in your mix. Okay. So recommended position is one third, one third away from the back wall. And some people uh, say 38%, there is a 38% rule. So your head should be 38% away from the uh, this wall. Okay. So that would be a good place to say, what else do you have to check for? So make sure you are creating an equilateral triangle. So the three uh, uh, points here, the human head, the two speakers should 
form a equilateral triangle that means you should have 60 degree 60 degree 60 degree and you know the speaker cannot be straight you have to tilt it towards you which is called the toe so you tilt the speaker so that the tweeter directly hits you the tweeter directly fires at you and in terms of vertical positioning also you try to keep it at, at such a height that the tweeter or the main uh, uh, acoustic axis of the speaker hits your ears so ear and eye is considered same level so basically if you can see it right in front of your eyes at the same level that's a good height for the speaker okay so sit in the right place create a equilateral triangle angle it correctly put the right height these are some basic things also you have to maintain symmetry as much as possible sometimes it's not possible because you have a cupboard or whatever design problem that's the issue so then what will happen is this whole thing might be more to this side now you should know in acoustics there is an effect called boundary effect that means that sound level increases uh, when something goes near a corner or near a wall so if you move this uh, entire setup more to the left side right so uh, even if you set the same volume for both the speakers the left speaker will be much more louder than the right speaker for anything you pan in the middle so that will actually misguide you you will keep panning to the other side to make the sound come up, uh, appear as if it's in the center but your mix is lopsided your mix is to one side so don't make that mistake if you have to sit to one side at least go and change the volume behind the left speaker till the center pan sound comes back to the center now your speakers are adjusted to the room problem and your mix will be okay okay so if you go asymmetrical to left or right it's a bad idea but if you are forced to do it set your speaker levels correctly so that your center pan sound still comes from the center and you don't start changing the panning in your mix okay what else stand makes a difference get a stand which is around 60 cm height and basically make a solid stand all these pole stand telescopic stand wobbles a lot any wobbling any wobbliness any movement uh, is added distortion you don't want that and make it out of metal it can be hollow but you fill sand in it or lead and you fill it till two third of the height so that way you pull the center of gravity down and that's a heavy and sturdy stand which will give the best platform for your speakers so this is made by dyna audio and they are following all these principles uh, it's made of aluminium and the center is filled with material to the right height so you basically are anchoring this speaker and giving it a very good support okay what else now you have to read about your speaker whichever model you are getting right they will explain uh, probably how to mount it so this is like a explanation by janelek so they tell you how the speaker's output changes based on where you keep the speaker so if you keep it against the back wall the, there's a 60 db bump and then when you put it in the corner like this there's a 12 db bump if you put it at the niche or uh, down in the corner the three walls come together i mean the two walls and the floor then you get 18 db bump these two are likely you might put the speaker in the corner or against the back wall so you can see how the level is bumping up for the bass so the more you take the speaker into the back wall and the corner the more the bass will increase or uh, sometimes the room is small you can't avoid it so what loudspeaker manufacturers do is they basically give you settings to control it okay also sometimes what happens is uh, the sound uh, is spreading in all directions so sound is going back hitting the back wall coming back and mixing with the direct sound so that will also create some cancellation so the manufacturer might tell you how far away to go where to not go in terms of the speaker relative to the back wall if you look at this picture uh, these are some tone controls given on the back of the speaker so they are telling you like uh, you know the bass tilt is there where we can dip the bass so the more we take it into the corner the lower we'll have to go and then obviously if the room has got uh, um, uh, no treatment then the highs might be too much so you dip that and sometimes what happens is you get a bump in the low mids because of the reflection from the table so then you try to correct that also so for all these reflections you might have tilt controls tone controls behind the speaker which you can change and improve the sound so you should read about it and the manufacturer will give detailed documentation for example noiman does it so they'll tell you exactly what to do based on where you have kept the speaker so don't ignore the documentation of your monitors okay always check that oh uh, okay so 
is that a lot for you guys to do you if you feel that this is too much to do too many things to do in acoustics you want sasta jugad you don't want to do crazy acoustic work then one solution you can do okay so take a look at this solution this is a solution you can try If room acoustics is not your thing, go to the roof. No acoustics there. You have made your own sasta and a quick chamber. Everything is okay till you fall off the roof. Cool. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so we are at the end of the presentation. I would like to show my email ID here. You are free to. Uh, email me any queries if you have and um, yeah i will reply to your questions over email i also want to showcase one studio that i have uh, designed and my firm has designed and cons constructed uh, this is a good example because it's a, a home studio okay it is called peachil studio that's in goregaon so i'll just stop the share and uh, share that uh, web page they have a video on their web page hang on Hang on one second. So this is a, a studio designed by my firm. I have a company called White Studio, and we make uh, studios basically. And uh, this is called Beachill Studio. This was a three-bedroom apartment in uh, Goregaon, where the owner, who's a sound engineer himself, and actually a student from of True School. uh he decided that he wanted to convert one bedroom into a control room and one bedroom into a recording room and yeah watch the video uh, yeah so this uh, studio the recording room uh, is designed for recording folly work but it's also like a home theater so you can it's a multi purpose room and the control room is a 5.1 uh, room and the home theater is a dolby atmos okay um one second let me go back to the presentation and see if there is any more so thank you guys for taking the time out and being patient and listening i am uh, finished with my presentation so uh, takoshi we can go ahead with more questions and i'll yes. stop sharing so i can see you guys yes uh okay guys we are opening up the session for q and a if you have any questions from the session you can ask directly 
uh, to sir just uh, raise your hand if you have any questions you can unmute and just ask straight away yeah. and uh, tapush you can tell me if there is yes. anything on the chat yes rohit uh, has a question yeah go ahead rohit yeah i wanted to ask is there any difference in the acoustic treatment for a control room which is meant for doing mixed stage stuff like 5.1 atmos and a control room which is more focused for music mixing yeah so there is a difference uh you know one of the requirements of dolby is that there should be no discrete reflection that means no loudspeaker can point towards a reflective uh, wall or something right uh, so what happens is if i make a a uh, studio where i put let's say uh, you know absorbers on some walls but not on some other walls and i go ahead and design it for atmos atmos can have many speakers so uh, you might then be in violation of what dolby requires because some one speaker might be pointing at the window of the recording room or one speaker might be pointing at just a bare wall so generally for post work for multi channel work and all that you make a room which is completely dead as much as possible dolby requires uh, around 250 millisecond reverb time uh, up from uh, 125 hertz up to 8k i think okay and um, uh, yeah so you 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 if you go to a mixed stage right it's all fabric very rarely will you see any wood and all being used okay? but uh, when it comes to music mixing especially stereo mixing people want some ambience also in the room so they put diffuse on the back wall and all that so uh, you can go slightly higher in reverb time and you can have a diffusive uh, space in a mixed stage don't do it because the sense of space is created by the multi channel system so you are putting multi channel reverb so you should be achieving that from your mix not from your room any other questions go ahead yes uh sir Yeah. Uh, how, how the uh, in the micro Microsoft and Echoic Chamber, we saw that uh, people are saying that the minus twenty three dBA is the like the threshold at which the molecules like collide and make sound, right? Yeah. How how did they determine that thing? Any idea? That uh, God determined. <laughs> uh, no, so, I mean, so people just discovered it. No, no, no. I what I am saying is how how did the the process involve? How did they capture so like such a small sound and determine that it's a minus twenty three dB? Because uh, they no one can uh, capture that, right? You are not capturing that. Uh, this goes into the field of physics where you are looking at uh, temperature also as energy, energy, thermal energy. So Brown Brownian motion creates uh, heat because it's friction. So based on those models, people have figured out. so it brownian motion is everywhere but brownian motion is in a copper wire also that's it's happening everywhere okay so okay, uh, we have a question from jj jj yeah where is jj hold on where is jj is a video close off jj you can ask the question directly you can just unmute yourself and ask the question Uh, yes uh, thank you i just wanted to know uh, what will be the uh, approximate cost of setting up something like uh, the beach hill studio a uh, beach hill studio the uh, entire budget was about 12 12 lakhs just for the acoustic construction part and the equipment is uh, separate great thank you you welcome i want to also uh, add this point that there was no major soundproofing work involved in beach hill because it uh, the owners didn't want it they they decided to have uh, the 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 control room uh, in one room and the recording room was not the neighboring room the neighboring room they kept as the bedroom so because of that gap there was no sound leakage between the rooms and uh, it's on uh, 10th floor of the building so they are not getting too much noise from outside as well so this 12 lakhs is acoustic treatment all all the furnishing and all that uh and some basic uh, some to feel like uh uh upvc door window and all that flooring no heavy construction was done okay, okay. noted any other questions shrey you can go ahead with your question 
so how do how do acoustics work for a place like prithvi theater and all where they like i have been there too many times and what happens is without mic the the like everyone is audible from each corner so like the, there is some like i have tried to figure out but i could never figure out that how does it work because like if you have been there you will realize that the what someone is speaking from one corner is like very audible and on the other corner of the theater yeah so i have been there i have attended plays there so i have experienced that and uh, this is basically concert hall acoustics right concert halls also don't use any mics and all that so it's very different from a studio kind of approach here you are trying to conserve sound energy as much as possible so you are trying to uh, make sure that acoustic sound energy created by the performance performers is going not only to the audience it's going equally to the audience and it is also going to everybody on stage right so uh, let me tell you it is the most difficult part of acoustic designing concert hall designing is probably the most challenging okay and uh, what you're doing is trying you're trying to reflect sound in a very controlled way to different places uh, and uh, there is a good book if you want to learn more about it there is a book called uh, illustrated guide to concert hall acoustics and uh, i will i'll maybe i'll email you the amazon link okay so here in that book uh, the uh, author has explained in quite detail with lot of pictures and all so you you are your job is opposite of what you do in a studio design you want to take care of that sound wave and take it as far away as possible in studios you want to generally kill the sound as much as possible next and uh, that's uh, the, it is a challenging uh, uh, area so what has happened is some concert also are revered and they are like considered amazing like boston symphony hall is considered one of the best examples of this design and some places are like uh, actually um, uh, failures fa failed projects like symphony uh, 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 so not symphony uh, sydney opera house is a example of a large scale acoustic design project which didn't work so even till date they are trying to solve the problem orchestra sound quite bad there people can't hear each other the mistake they they made was they made the all too big and you cannot do that like boston symphony hall is a limited size you cannot go too big because after all sound is acoustic energy right? you can't keep trying to reflect it it will die what other questions let's have more questions the next question is from noel and someone has their mic on could you please mute yourself and see so is noel around yes uh, noel noel is in the participants so you can go ahead noel and ask your question i think he dropped out uh, but i'll put forward his question anyway yeah. uh, so novel asked about uh, room correction softwares and if they help in a home studio environment yeah so you have to understand this concept that room correction software cannot solve uh, some of the basic acoustic problems for example what is comb filtering you have the direct sound coming from the speaker and then you have a reflected sound coming from the wall and certain frequencies meeting 180 degrees out of phase and they are cancelling out a room correction software cannot eq it and bring it up because if it tries to make it louder on the speaker even the reflection will get louder and it will again cancel out so this concept is called non minimum phase and minimum phase these are this is the technical word for it but simply put in a room correction software you might be able to solve like the amount of bass or the amount of highs in the uh, room Uh, but it cannot solve comb filtering issues which is actually the biggest problem in your if your room has flutter echo room correction software cannot stop it it cannot change things in the physical world so it is some improvement but not like a alternate or a substitute for uh, for treatment i have tried it um uh, i have tried it and uh, it is uh, the sound improves a little bit but not it's not a perfect solution Uh, and sir i had a question so in yeah. in like a lot of us uh, often work in rented apartments so sometimes yeah. it's difficult to do the floating floor, floor design at least in rented apartments because it's like a permanent fixture so yeah. how how can we uh, 
you know, tackle with uh, floor vibrations and structural vibrations? Uh, and how can we treat the floor uh, temporarily to work? Uh, see, uh, floor why floor is not a major source of sound, okay? Because uh, uh, it is it's actually a building slab. It's very heavy, so to vibrate it is not so easy. Uh, so you will definitely have bigger problems of sound leaking from your windows and all, and uh, you will have sound from the top, footfall sound. If if someone is all constantly moving furniture upstairs, right? That sound will come to you. So um, floor is should not be a big issue. And my recommendation is don't do any kind of soundproofing work in a rented apartment. It's money wasted. Um, basically, work in the uh, during the quieter hours. Uh, make use of close-back headphones a little more. Uh, sit really close to the monitors. Don't sit away from it. All these steps can sort of like you know uh, reduce the effect of the leakage to you. And uh, uh, you. Uh, when you leave the house, the person might ask you that, you know, make it all normal, which is a waste of money. So doing treatment is better. Take care of like first reflection and all. That is a much better way. Do you think wardrobes can also work as base traps in, in, in apartments? Like any, any kind of uh, furniture where there is a panel uh, and a cavity of air behind it is a base trap of some kind. Now you don't know which frequency. So it is all resonating. You know, if your entire room is made of cupboards and the cupboard plywood is really thin, they are, it's like a huge base trap. So yes, it will do. Uh, Dibesh has a question. Dibesh, you can go, go ahead. Dibesh. You can unmute and ask. Dibesh. Are you... Um, go ahead. Uh, so I have a question that uh, if we has a noisy room, which will be the uh, better option of uh, to locate a steel in that or uh, plenty of curtains or cupboards? Uh, your voice is breaking. Uh, so okay, repeat it one more time. Uh, if we had a noisy room, uh, so we uh, what will be the better option, sir, uh, to Locate steel or a plenty of curtains and cupboards or uh, fall ceiling. Where is the noise coming from? Like uh, you have to be a little more specific. Where where is the which this noisy room is uh, noisy because of what windows, kind of sir. Uh, Window. Uh, like uh, yes, sir. Windows. Uh, 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 neighbors are talking or the uh, vehicles like that, sir. Do you own the house or do you rent it? Uh, I own the house, sir. So you should uh, upgrade to UPVC window. That will be the best way. And seal it shut when you want to work. Okay, Look at sir. brands like Fenesta. Fenesta is an Indian brand. and uh, oh, yes, uh, You can Google uh, that and uh, look at the models. And they'll come and take measurement of your window and bring yes, the product sir. and install it in one day. It will be a little more expensive if the window is huge. So it depends on area. Uh, okay, sir. Okay, cool. What other questions do we have? Thank you, sir. So I wanted to ask you something. Yeah, go ahead, Chirag. Yeah. Uh, so, so when you take over a project or when someone approaches you for a project regarding acoustic treatment, yeah. what exactly is your workflow? Uh, is there any software which you use for prediction? For example, how we have... Uh, prediction softwares for uh, venues when we uh, put yeah. speakers around. So is there any software, predi prediction software which you use? Yeah, so a um, uh, couple of things are there here. One is, first of all, small room prediction is considered almost like useless. Okay, because small room acoustics are very chaotic and to successfully predict it is considered uh, like we don't really have the technology to do it very accurately right now. So there are prediction software, there is uh, Ease, there is Odeon, these softwares are there. Uh, but they are generally for bigger spaces like auditorium design and you know places like that, uh, concert hall design. Uh, if you go and visit their website and see their catalog and all, they only show those kind of pictures. They don't show studio and all. Okay. Uh, there is a free software available called CAT Acoustic, C-A-T-T, C-A-T-T Acoustic. Um, uh, you can Google it and download it. 
uh, and uh, if you write to the to the company right they will send you a license so that you can run it and i did it and i use it but uh, when i did it that owner only told me that it is not meant for small room acoustics so prediction is a little challenging for small rooms um uh, yeah so it's not like linery liner is a totally different business because you have a product which you have manufactured you can take it to an anaerobic chamber and completely like analyze it here you are trying to understand how a specific room will behave once you have put a cad model in it so predicting that is not 100% accurate and uh, the other problem is uh, softwares which might be doing it better like ease and odeon they are very expensive so hopefully my company will pr procure it in future but right now we don't use that we try to use cat acoustic okay so what's your workflow like when you first see a room which is completely out of control like how how do you go about it well the ideal uh, project would be a turnkey project for a commercial studio because but that's what we prefer as a company also because what happens is uh, it's easier to build that than do home studios because the problem is uh, a home studio in the end a person never uh, lets go of the fact that it is a home so i have been into situation where a person wanted sound proofing but he wants the cupboard in the same place you know so it gets little tricky because the cupboard is built into the room and how do i sound proof the room if i cannot build a cage so uh, we prefer a for commercial studios but we do uh, home studios as well um in a commercial studio ideally i want to be involved right from the beginning right from the time when they are scouting for the property for the location because many times what happens is they are choosing a place where there's a gym upstairs and then you get dum dum sound and yeah. you are trying to do that sound proofing so that is bad or a person has taken a a uh, place and there is a hospital right next then uh, they they get irritated when you are constructing it because they are like the uh, hospital is getting disturbed so uh, i want to get involved right at the time when they are purchasing or uh, leasing the place uh, this is something that not many people do many people make this common mistake of taking the place and then consulting with the acoustician and then the acoustician tells that there are so many things wrong with the place now once we have the place we do measurement Uh, so do accurate measurement of the place find out where the electricals come from um, you know window and the sun path and all those things and then we design a, a 3d model and show the client uh, obviously you have to discuss with the client what he wants and you try to model the uh, entire place like that and once he approves you begin with the construction so you start with uh, sound proofing and then you uh, finish with equipment installation there are so many stages in between what makes it tricky is that lot of things have to go in parallel so managing that project is not easy you have to you have to do the wiring also but at the same time you are doing carpentry work also at the same time you are doing some uh, furniture ka kaam taki furniture comes uh, gets ready at the right time so project management can get tricky you have to do that and then in the end we to uh, calibrate the room so that's what we do. okay uh, kalpesh you can go next uh, yeah so hi sir thanks a lot for this session actually it's been very You're welcoming welcome. otherwise and yeah. uh, i have a question like uh, i have my small home studio yeah and uh, this is like i've just tried to uh, draw a diagram of it so this yeah. is a really unusual room yeah and uh, my problem is i have a l shaped uh, table yeah which was already there so i uh, you know tried to utilize it and also so, this is an unusual corner that i have now the yeah. problem is uh whenever i'm making the sounds like uh, producing the music um it it sounds very full okay like uh, i'm talking in reference with the bass and yeah. uh, the lows and what happens is when i'm uh, trying to you know listen to the reference uh, in the car or maybe on another uh, system uh, yeah. somewhere else uh it sounds very you know uh, the bass is really less okay sometimes okay so i think is is it like the base in the room is quite a lot yeah so you have some strong resonance and mm -hmm. uh, that resonance is making you feel that the sound is correct so i correct. would uh, always recommend using like a open back headphone or something and checking the base again uh, yes. as you're mixing yes. and yes. it's it's unlikely that it's between the front and the back wall because the back wall is flayed so mm. strong resonances happen between parallel surfaces so it could be your side walls or your ceiling and floor 
Okay. Also, sir, could it be because of the uh, the L-shaped table that I'm using because it has like a hollow space uh, uh, underneath? So no, I mean you won't get any uh, like very loud bass because of that. Whatever resonance happens inside is triggered by your speaker only, so that won't create any issues. In fact, so, that uh, should reduce the bass because okay, if any, it's something is resonating quick... in a cavity, right? It's away from mm -hmm. the listener. Yeah, the energy is gone. Okay, so any quick fixes that I can do to, you know, like uh, get over it other than the, I'm already using the open back uh, monitor headphones, but anything else that I can uh, do? You know, I'll tell you what you do. You, uh, I'll chat. Uh, go to, I mean, Google this website, Amrock Calculator, okay? And what will happen is you put the dimensions of your room. And it Correct. will give you the standing wave sequence. Uh, it's one word, uh, Amrock. So Amrock calculator. Uh, Amrock from me to Aditya. Wait, I have to send it to everybody. One second. Yeah. Everyone in meeting. Amrock calculator. So go to this website. Feed your uh, dimensions. Uh, it will calculate and give you a full graph. The cool mm -hmm. thing is in the graph, it will show you a lot of bars and when you click the bars, right, it generates mm -hmm. a sine wave and you will hear right. it on the speaker. So Love keep it. clicking till you hit the bar, which is the loudest. Okay. 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 It will tell you whether it's the height axis or the width axis mm -hmm. and whichever axis it is, try to treat it like uh, be ready to lose like six inches or so and treat that entire wall. That is yeah. the right way to go about it. You All can't, right. you can't uh, EQ it out. And hmm, you correct. can't, uh, like, uh, there's no other way to solve it. You have to absorb it. Okay. Also, there's an additional question, quick question to the same. Sure. Uh, I'm using Rocket 5 uh, as my uh, PA over there. So, That's one more reason why you're getting more bass. Yeah. So okay. KRK is pura yeah. ekdom bass heavy. Correct. Ba oh, okay. Good for partying, yeah. I used to have a rock, <laughs> Rocket 8. All right. Cool. So, so I stopped uh, should... mixing on it and started partying on it. Will Adams uh, will be a good good option? Would Adams? Be if you option? can afford Neumann, go for Neumann. It is very linear. Base is very accurate. Uh, see yeah. which model fits in your budget, or okay. work like work work towards uh, getting a budget which gets you a Neumann. That is a very accurate monitor and yeah. really worth the. Uh, so how, how about the new series of JBL that they have come up with? Yeah, very good. Are very good? good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Welcome. Sir, Matthew Koshi has one uh, question about that Excel sheet that you were talking about with the calculations for the panels. So, so he, he wants to know where he can get it from. You will have to search on it, uh, search on uh, forums like Gear Sluts. Okay, so Gear Sluts. That's like the biggest uh, forum in the world for audio stuff. And uh, John Sears. Recording Studio Forum. So go here and search, and you'll get a lot of people share all this. Uh, Rohit has a question. Yeah. Yeah. So, would you recommend using open back or close back headphones in a home studio? If your home uh, studio place is noisy, then you know the open back becomes useless. Because you can't hear any detail. So open back is something I would recommend only if you have very silent place. Uh, truly open back is actually what you can use in, inside a studio. So it is counterproductive, right? So close back to begin with, I would say. Uh, Karan Saru. Karan, you can go ahead. Um, hello. Yeah, go ahead. Karan. Can I be heard? Um, hi, thank you so much for this uh, You're welcome. Uh, class. One question, one question was about uh, base traps and also oh. about the minimum thickness for the rock wool panels that could go on the sides. So, um, like, so I'll ask the two questions. One is about the base trap. Like, should it be all the way from the bottom to the top, or is it okay if it's sort of like a panel in the middle of the wall? And how thick should it be minimum? And if you could also recommend a thickness for the side uh, panels. Yeah, that that's uh, like uh, 
difficult to tell you precisely because it depends on the room's problems. But uh, let me tell you, like uh, the base trap, lesser than six inches in depth won't really do much, right? And uh, mm. it doesn't matter where you're putting it; the surface area matters. So you should try to cover as much of the a uh, wall as you as much as you can, and uh, it should be that wall where you think the base is resonating. So again, I would recommend using this AMRO calculator and trying to see. On which axis is the room resonating? Because room can resonate sideways, front to back, and top to bottom. Okay, so uh, let's right. say you find that it's resonating sideways the most, then your base trap should go on the sides. Actually, so yeah, mm. uh, as much as possible if if you do for the entire wall, that will help you. And thickness of uh, absorber, uh, very thin is not recommended because what happens is it only absorbs the very high frequency, so your sound becomes dull. So if you have a reverb kind of problem. Uh, three four inches should be the depth of the foam panel. That will give you good uh, okay. good treatment. Okay. You get uh, in the in the market you get twelve mm and all, but I would not recommend that. It's that where it's very thin and only absorbs the higher frequencies. Doesn't okay. do anything for the mates. Also, if I may, I'd like to ask you about your experience with near field monitors uh, yeah. and the question is about two way two way versus three way like do you think that a three way necessarily is a better speaker or does it have possibly even it's more complicated because there are two crossover frequencies and that kind of you know this comes up because like i was looking at adam and the adam s2v is a two way monitor and it's near field yeah. The S3V, which is yeah. the three-way, they they don't allow, technically they say you cannot use it as a near field. You can only use it as a mid field. So that you know that was where this question comes from. That if you could choose, would you be fine with the two-way, or do you necessarily prefer a three-way? And also, if I can, I'd just like to ask you if you ever tried using the Amphion, uh, Amphion. 118s or 115s and if you there's a lot of hype about them in the US where they they're saying they're very very good for mixing so that was my I, I have not used Amphion but I've heard them and mm -hmm. they are very uh, flat response so they give that very neutral type of sound so if you're okay. into it yeah definitely you go for it uh, any very neutral sounding monitor makes your mixing easier uh, mm -hmm. because uh, you know once you get used to it you know Exactly what um, what the monitor is going to do, right? Mm -hmm. And in terms of two-way and three three-way, uh, if you have a two-way and three-way of the same pricing, then the two-way is definitely better because the three-way has more components and they have had to uh, scale down the quality to you know right. fit it in the budget. But if right. you're not looking, if the prices are not the same and you know proportionately the three-way is higher, then mm -hmm. three-way is better because three-way uh, means three amps. So the amp mm -hmm. is amplifying a limited range. That's a better thing. Mm -hmm. Every driver is uh, so uh, like taking care of a limited bandwidth, so it will perform better. It won't go into any breakup. And you right. should know that you know as the frequency rises, speakers start to beam more. So what mm -hmm. happens in two way is that the woofer might already go into beaming, and then mm -hmm. the tweeter comes and widens it. So you get a very weird mm -hmm. kind of room response. So in a three way, mm -hmm. you can try to solve it in a better way. So three-way mm -hmm. uh, will outperform a two-way if it's if it's not of the same price, right? Uh, yeah. The thing about a three-way is that uh, the point where all the drivers like uh, they converge, that might be mm -hmm. uh, that might require a little more distance. So if you can get mm -hmm. that distance, and you have the you have the budget for a three-way, three-way will definitely sound better. Definitely, okay. it will go lower in base, and uh, you can go for it if your room doesn't have any serious base uh, problems. Mm -hmm. Can you recommend one that you like uh, for near field monitoring? Because there are not many. They all them all of them are usually quite large. So for near field, there are very few options that I know of, at least. Like, yeah. So uh, if you have the budget, for, uh, yeah, Dyn Audio LYD is good, and um, uh, the Neumann 310 is very good. If you have the budget for it, go for it. These are great investments. Like, they are very linear. Especially okay. the three ten. Okay, Neumann three ten, and and yeah. also because it it should also be kind of fun to produce on. But 
I guess once you get used to it, you get used. To then it. you audition them till you're happy and get the one which yeah. you actually also enjoy in terms of listening to your reference tracks. So mm. if you have a set of reference tracks, take them to the dealer and uh, play it and listen. That's what I would say. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, Jay, you can go next. Uh, I just had a one uh, one uh, suggestion or recommendation for any software for calibration of the speakers that you can suggest any software or something uh you want to calibrate uh, so just the software not enough if you want to do proper calibration you need microphone and all that okay. so you'll have to get a measurement mic and a sound okay. card and uh, sound card and speaker you'll already have but you need a measurement mic first of all so uh, like a uh, you know you you can google it go uh, like just google measurement mic and you'll get a lot of brands by dynamic mm1 is good and then there are measurement mics by uh, uh, audix and many many other companies it depends on how much budget you have and then uh, software for uh, analyzing what's going on uh, for monitors and all is i use systune systune is by a company called bit i'll just type this so company called this AFMG Systune is there uh, and you can use other softwares like uh, there is a free software called R E W room EQ visit. This is free you, okay. and it's very detailed, but uh, you a learning curve is there. So you have to spend some time with it. Room EQ visit. Okay. You can try that. Okay. There is another one called suggestion? smart. Smart. Okay. Yeah. And any suggestion for a home theater, for any software that you can suggest for a home theater? Same. Calibration. Because you, you use the same things. Same, same setup oh, can be used. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're Thank you. Rohit, you can go ahead with your question. Uh, so, in an ideal situation, would you yeah. choose your monitors according to your room? Or would you treat your room according to the monitors that you want to you will treat the room to solve any serious acoustic problems and get the most accurate monitor which you think works for you. That's the correct approach. You know, the higher end the monitor gets, uh, the more, uh, I mean, the less sense it makes to put in an untreated room. So you can ask Shrey, he bought Neumann, but he has done not done treatment. Okay, guys, any more questions? See any hands raised? Okay. Uh, I think we are done. Thank you so much, sir, for the session. It was a lovely session, and thank you, uh, guys, for joining in. Uh, do you want to, sir? Do you want to add any closing statements to your session? Anything? Uh, no. I mean, uh, all I want to say is uh, I'm available on email, and uh, yeah, feel free to contact me if you require any more guidance. And uh, also, uh, I just want to say that in true school, you will uh, keep getting these kind of masterclass, uh, you know, activities. And I'm sure they'll be very interesting and informative. And since everyone is at home and you can, it's easier to now access uh, from a remote location, right? So keep doing it and keep learning. So it's a great opportunity. Right. And uh, thank, fact, thanks for the time. Thank you so much, sir. In fact, next uh, week we have Fali Damania, who's a freelance uh, life sound engineer for AR Rahman and Amit Prigeti. He is one of the very few wireless uh, and RF engineers uh, in the country. So please, if you are available, we, it's going to happen uh, next Thursday at 7 p.m. same time. Uh, we'll probably have the link up for registrations by Monday, I'm guessing. Please keep an eye out on TSM's page and do register for it if you are interested in live sound or in, in case you're just in general want to know about wireless tech. And I'm hoping to see you again soon. Thank you so much, guys. See you, soon. See you guys. Bye-bye. Good night. <laughs>